Hi everyone, it's Andy here and I'm back again with a selection of the best true wireless port earbuds you can get today on the market. I'm going to talk about specifications and all the technical details, but maybe more importantly I'm also going to share my experience with you, so you might get a better idea what to expect from each of these buds during exercise or during casual day-to-day -day use. So let's get started. To kick things off, I know a lot of you are wondering which one of these buds is my personal favorite, so if you don't want to watch the whole video, here we go. My absolute number one choice is... For the rest of you who are interested in a detailed comparison, let's go and see all the five earbuds one by one. Strictly in alphabetical order, the first one to talk about is the Beats Fit Pro. I got these buds the very last minute before this video, so I only had a limited time to test them, but a couple of strength and run sessions were more than enough to convince me that they have the right to be here. I love the Beats Studio buds for their snug fit and the good ANC in my ears, and the Fit Pro did not disappoint either. Most other buds in this comparison come with multiple wingtips of different sizes, so you can easily find the one that fits you the best, but Beats decided to go the one size fits all way and gave us a non-removable art support instead. It works well in my ears, so I won't be complaining, but it's the lack of options what I don't like that much. What I like though is their small overall size and the weight of the buds which is around 5.7 grams each and that makes them the second lightest of this test right after the Jabra's. Comfort is good and the fit is very secure too. Interesting fact that I got much more of a vacuum effect with the Beat Studio buds but the Fit Pro feels just as secure thanks to the extra support those fins can provide. The buds are IPX4 rated only which is rather below average for sportier buds but after a couple of days and with a few workouts in the bag I can safely say that the buds are more than okay to handle some sweat as they are quite solidly built. The carry case is not my favorite though. It feels and looks cheap, it's not compact enough off, the lid has quite a play when closed and there is no Qi wireless charging support. But we have the same USB-C port as on all the other cases. The total battery life can be 24 hours with ANC on and the bots can last up to 6 hours on their own. If we turn off ANC it can go up to 7 hours which also adds a couple of hours to the total play time too. It's not a bad performance at all, it's the second best actually after the JBL and the Jabra in terms of total battery life. 5 minutes of fast fueling can give the bots enough juice for an hour of use, which is just about the same as what most other bots can do in that regard. The Beats Fit Pro costs $200. Next up is one of my top 5 bots from last year, the Bose Sport Earbuds. Bose didn't come out with a new model this year, but they kept improving the functionality of their sport earbuds through firmware updates. Still, these guys are not going to win any best features award, but that's not why I like them anyway, it's their sound which is still hard to beat in my opinion, but more about that in a minute. Bose gives us three sets of these super soft integrated ear tips and wings in the box and even though the buds are not the smallest or lightest, I find them the most comfortable and they also sit securely in my ears. But you won't get too much of a passive noise isolation and this is the only model in this comparison which has no active noise cancelling at all. The IPX4 rating is not the best you can get either, but that's still enough to protect the buds from sweat and splashes. The buds will last about 5 hours with one charge and the total playtime is only 15 hours which is kind of ridiculous given how much bigger the case is than the others. And the case cannot even be charged wirelessly but I like the lock on the lid which can only be opened by pressing the button on the front. 
The Bose case offers a 15 minutes quick charge which can give you up to 2 hours of use with the buds which is more than you get from the others, so it can make up for the poor battery life, sort of. And even though these buds have been out for quite a while now, their official price is still around 200 euros or dollars, but you can find good deals on them here and there if you look closely enough. Onto the Jabra Elite 7 Active, they have a liquid silicone rubber coating, and even if these buds are the only ones in this test that come without any ear wings or arch support, I would probably call them the most secure in my ears. The Jabra buds are also one of the smallest and lightest of the bunch. They sit deep in my ears, giving me not only a secure fit, but an outstanding level of passive noise isolation and a great level of comfort as well. We get an IP57 rating, which makes them not only fully waterproof, but they are also protected against dust ingress to a certain extent. But I have to remind you that even though some of these earbuds are fully waterproof, neither of them can be used for swimming, as water blocks all radio signals, Bluetooth included. Back to the Jabras, their case is smaller than the others, but it's very well built. It has wireless charging, 30 hours of total battery life, and the fast charge feature, which can provide the buds with enough power to use them for an hour after only 5 minutes of charging. The buds themselves can run for up to 8 hours on a full charge, with ANC turned on. This performance is on par with the JBL and better than the rest. If I had to choose, I would say the design of both the buds and the case are my personal favorites due to their compact size, and these are one of the cheaper ones of the group as well, with a price of $180. Moving on to the Jaybird Vista 2, these were my most awaited earbuds of 2021, as I loved the original Vista so, so much. And thankfully Jaybird only improved things that needed to be improved, and left most things that worked perfectly well already unchanged. So it's the same shape, same size, same ear tips with integrated wings, which you get three sets of in the box. The buds weigh in at around 6.6 grams each, which makes them a fraction heavier than the original, but the fit is still very secure and the comfort is first class too. The IP68 rating means full protection against dust and water, but Jaybird simply calls their buds earth proof. If you are wondering what that actually means, you can go watch my review of the Vista 2 right now, but in short, these are one of the toughest guys in this test for sure. Onto the case, it is the only one here today with an IP54 rating of its own. So this is a small case, but a tough one too. And a few of the upgrades we got with the second gen model were the Qi wireless charging support and the improved total battery life. Now we have 24 hours with ANC turned off and 18 hours with ANC on. The bots can last up to 8 or 6 hours respectively, and 5 minutes of quick charging can also give you an extra hour of use. The Jaybird Vista 2 costs $210 or euros. And the JBL Reflect Flow Pro are the last buds we have in this test today. Their 10 hours of single charge playtime is the best with ANC turned off, and you can still get 8 hours of use out of the buds if you turn on ANC. Not that the active noise cancelling does much at all, but we get back to it later in the video. So the buds have a good battery life and the case offers 30 hours of use in total as well. But big batteries mean big size too, both the buds and the case are large and kind of heavy. The earbuds come in at around 7.3 grams each, which puts them on the top of the list, which probably is the only list you are supposed to be at the bottom of if you want to succeed in the sport earbud business. And the heavier than average weight translates into a less than ideal comfort and fit in my ears. I mean the fit is still tight enough for most exercises including running, but the long term comfort suffers a bit in my ears. But again the fit is tight and that's what matters the most during a workout as short term comfort is secondary in my opinion, you know, no pain, no gain. But joking aside, comfort is not that bad at all, and the JBL bots got the same IP68 rating as the Jaybird Vista 2, and that catapults them right to the top when it comes to durability and ruggedness. Their case is also very well built, even though it's quite a chunky one. This case is the only one beside the Jaybird with a little loop on it, which you can use to hook it onto your gym bag or running belt, or whatever you think you should hook it onto. 
The large case comes with wireless charging support and again, the best battery life overall, so size does matter after all. The JBL Reflect Flow Pro costs $180. And after all the general description of each bud, let's see some specific features and compare the buds starting with their wireless connection. The only buds that run Bluetooth version 5.2 is the Jabra Elite 7 Active, while the Bose Sport earbuds come with 5.1 and all the rest is equipped with version 5.0. All earbuds support the SBC and the AAC audio codecs only, no higher bitrate options to be found anywhere across the board. In general, connecting the bus to either Android or iOS devices is quick and easy. The Beats Fit Pro comes with an Apple H1 chip inside and that makes it the best option for iPhone users with exclusive features such as automatic switching, audio sharing or hands-free Siri activation. On Android, however, neither of these functions are available with the Beats. But again, in general, all of the bots perform well in terms of pairing and signal stability, regardless of what phone you have. And while that's the case, let me have a few more comments on this matter. First, the Vista 2 has the weakest signal, so the range you can get with the Jaybird Buds is the most limited, and that can affect the use of the Buds in a crowded gym, for example. However, running with my phone tucked away in a pocket or in a running belt gave me no signal dropouts with any of the Buds. And second, there is this hissing noise I found to be constantly present in the left bud on one of my samples I got from Jabra, but the same issue seemed to be non-existent on another pair of Elite 7 Actives I bought for myself. Third, the only earbuds that cannot be used independently from each other are the Bose, while all the others support single bud mode. And finally, the Beats Fit Pro is the only one that supports multipoint use, which they call automatic switching, but it only works within the Apple ecosystem thanks to the H1 chip. There might be a software update coming for the Jabras with multipoint use later on, but they don't have that yet as of making this video, and I don't even think that there is such an option for the rest of the buds at all. Onto latency, watching movies gets the green light from all the five buds, as I experienced no obvious lip sync issues with any of them. And for the first time ever, I did some not so scientific latency tests for all the gamers out there. Well, not sure if I did everything correctly, but my measurements kind of confirmed my experience with gaming. So the two best buds are the Beats and the Jaybird, while the worst is the Jabra, with the other two somewhere in between. But again, I wouldn't put too much trust in my words when it comes to gaming, as I'm neither a hardcore gamer nor am I a scientist. You know, I would rather take any of the buds and run a few case with them and share that experience with you. But that's a sport earbuds comparison after all, so maybe that's okay. And the same applies to phone calls, as in I barely ever use any of my earbuds to make calls to be honest, but for those of you who are interested in how each of them can perform in that scenario, here are some audio samples. This is a short test of what you can expect from the Beats Fit Pro in terms of voice transmission quality using their built-in microphones in a quiet environment. This is a short test of what you can expect from the Bose Sport earbuds in terms of voice transmission quality using their built-in microphones in a quiet environment. This is a short test of what you can expect from the Jabra Elite 7 Active in terms of voice transmission quality using their built-in microphones in a quiet environment. This is a short test of what you can expect from the Jaybird Vista 2 in terms of voice transmission quality using their built-in microphones in a quiet environment. This is a short test of what you can expect from the JBL Reflect Flow Pro in terms of voice transmission quality using their built-in microphones in a quiet environment. And this is another short test of what you can expect from the Beats Fit Pro in terms of phone call quality and noise filtering in an environment with loud background noise such as a coffee shop. And this is another short test of what you can expect from the Bose Sport earbuds in terms of phone call quality and noise filtering in an environment with loud background noise, such as a coffee shop. And this is another short test of what you can expect from the Jabra Elite 7 Active in terms of phone call quality and noise filtering in an environment with loud background noise, such as a coffee shop. And this is another short test of what you can expect from the Jaybird Vista 2 in terms of phone call quality and noise filtering in an environment with loud background noise, such as a coffee shop. And this is another short test of what you can expect from the JBL Reflect Flow Pro in terms of phone call quality and noise filtering in an environment with loud background noise, such as a coffee shop.
My favorite here is the Jabra and not only because they have the clearest sound of them all, but also because of their side tone feature, which allows me to hear my own voice in the bus during a call, which makes talking a bit more comfortable with my ears plugged in. In terms of controls on the earbuds themselves, each manufacturer has a slightly different approach. Bose and JBL use touch sensitive interfaces, while Jabra and Beats decided to put actual physical buttons on their buds, and it was only Jaybird who realized that you can combine the physical buttons with the touch controls. What all these buds have in common is that you can manage your phone calls from the buds, and they all have a smart sensor which can enable automatic play pause. Strangely enough, both have such a sensor only on the right earbud, while all the others have smart sensors on both sides. When the Bose Sport earbuds came out in 2020, they had a very limited functionality, but they got some major upgrades since their launch, and now you can control play, pause, volume and your voice assistant, but you can either skip to the next track or back to the previous one only, as there is only one single tapping action available on the left bud. And that's not even activated by default, you have to go into the app to turn it on. The touchpads work ok as they register tapping with a high enough accuracy, but their functionality is still one of the worst. The next buds with touch controls are the Reflect Flow Pros. You have access to basically all functions through their touchpads, and you can have these different groups of functions set up for playback, volume, ambient sound and your voice assistant. But you can only have two of these activated at the same time, and you cannot select individual touch commands either. So if you want to control your tracks and volume, you will lose control over the ambient modes for example. But with the JBL buds you can summon both the Google Assistant and Amazon and Alexa hands free, so at least there is that. Next up are the Beats Fit Pros and their physical buttons which work ok, as in they are easy enough to press with a nice feedback, but similarly to what I experienced with the Beats Studio Buds, you can accidentally press the buttons when putting the buds in or taking them out from your ears. As far as the available functions go, you can use them to control play, pose and track forward or backward. But if you want to control volume with the press and hold action, then you have to give up ambient mode controls and voice assistant controls. The Beats buds work hands free with Siri, but other voice assistants will not be available from the Fit Pro if you decide to go with the volume controls on an Android device. The next pair of earbuds that have tactile buttons are the Jabra Elite 7 Active. The buttons work perfectly fine with short reaction times and full functionality. And most tapping actions are remappable in the Jabra Sound Plus app too, with the exception of the press and hold, which is fixed to control the volume. But you can get all your controls, such as play, pause, tracks, ambient modes and of course volume, all at the same time. Amazon Alexa or the Google Assistant can work hands free too, after setting it up in the app. Even though these buds sit quite deep in my ears, I don't have to apply too much pressure when pressing the buttons, so it does not make using the controls uncomfortable at all. And also the physical buttons work in all environments and under all conditions, which make them a better choice for most physical activities than touch controls in my opinion. But just in case, Jaybird decided to give you both options on the Vista 2. You can control play, pause, tracks and ambient modes, but in order to gain volume controls you have to give up the voice assistant activation, and there is no hands-free option either. It's a minor issue in my eyes, but you might find it a bigger deal than I do. The buttons work ok, even though they require a little bit more force to press them, which puts them at a disadvantage compared to the Jabra, which are much more comfortable to use, especially in the long run, both literally and metaphorically speaking. So if I were to rank the buds regarding their controls, I would put the Jabra Elite 7 Active on the top of the podium, followed by the Jaybird and the Beats. Bose and JBL, however, both lose some scores here due to their limited touch control functionality. <clears throat> and that ranking will not change that much when it comes to the companion apps and their features either. Well, maybe the JBL can step up on the podium replacing the beats, but let's see what each of the smartphone apps can do. 
Starting with the bows, well, not much. Other than the limited contrary mapping options, we have an auto play pose switch, and since the latest firmware update now, there is an EQ as well, with four presets and custom settings. It's not the most sophisticated EQ ever, but maybe the Bose buds are the ones that require the least EQing, because they sound really good by default. You also get user guides and firmware upgrades in the app, but that applies to all apps today anyway. As I said, the Beats Fit Pro have tight connections with iOS, which means more features, but it doesn't really mean more settings or custom options when connected to either an iPhone or an iPad. Regardless of which platform you use, all you get is some basic ANC settings, the custom press and hold control settings, an ear tip fit test, and the auto play pose switch. On iOS you also get the spatial audio feature with dynamic head tracking and some built-in EQ presets. Next up is the JBL Headphones app, with its well thought out structure and a good list of features, such as ANC settings, EQ with both presets and limitless custom options, touch control settings, an auto off timer, a play pose switch, settings for your voice assistant, a tip fit test, and the find my buds feature, which makes the buds beep loudly, so you can locate them easily. It's all great, but in the Jaybird app you get even more flexible ANC and button control settings, for example. You also get a map based find my buds feature, instead of the beeping one in the JBL app, and this time you get a chance to locate the case as well, not just the buds themselves. There is no auto off timer here, but you get an auto play pose switch, and there are the EQ settings which are my personal favorites of them all. You can not only choose from multiple presets and create your own sound profiles, but you can also share them with other Jaybird users, and you can download their settings and use or even tweak those too. It can be a fun way of exploring different sound signatures. But not even this comprehensive list of functions and settings can make the Jaybird app good enough to compete with the best there is, which is the Jabra Sound Plus app. We get an almost intimidating selection of features and next level of customization for the Elite 7 Active. ANC settings? Check. EQ presets with custom profiles and a hearing test to tailor the sound to your ears? Check. Custom control settings? Find my buds, auto play pose switch, voice assistant settings, sleep mode timer and tip fit test? Check, 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 check and check. I hope I was counting right. And there is much, much more, but you will have to watch my Elite 7 Active review to learn what those other features are, as this video is getting too long already. And if you think that it's just a formality to announce the Jabra Sound Plus app as the clear winner of this test, you are not wrong, but there is one caveat, and that's that I found this app the least stable of them all, with more crashes than all the other apps together. So let's just say that while they offer the most features, with Jaybird and JBL being close second, I believe there is some work all of these companies have to do with their respective app, some maybe a bit more than the others though. And now let's see how the buds rank in terms of active noise cancelling performance. I did some tests including running and walking outside with heavy traffic around me, sometimes with strong winds as well, and I also ran a few tests sitting in front of my computer playing loud airplane cabin noise or some ambient chatter from a coffee shop. Of course I took all the buds to the gym as well to find out which one works the best as far as keeping me in the zone. So in my ears and during my tests, I found that the Beats Fit Pro wins by quite a margin ahead of the Jabra Elite 7 Active, while the Jaybird finished third and the JBL came in fourth place. The Bose Sport earbuds do not even have ANC, so let's just forget about those for a second. Or maybe not, because the lack of ANC and the poor passive noise isolation will probably make them less than ideal for gym use, especially if there is loud music coming from the speakers, so keep that in mind. But back to the ANC performance of the others, the JBL is clearly the least effective of them all, with only a basic level of noise cancelling. To be fair though, the less than perfect passive isolation in my ears probably contributes to the mediocre ANC performance, so your mileage might vary. But that applies to all earbuds in general, without a good seal you cannot expect to have great active noise cancelling. But back to the JBL, there is only an ANC on off switch in the app, no custom settings whatsoever, and even though the ANC itself is supposedly adaptive, it does not feel like it's doing much at all. 
but we get both an ambient aware and the talk through mode and this latter one is unique in a sense. When the talk through mode is active your music gets pulled down so with all the ambient noise getting through you can actually have a conversation with someone while the earbuds are still in your ears. With the Jaybird Vista 2 you can find more settings and options in the app. The ANC itself is not as strong as on either the Beats or the Jabra, but you get a great surround sense mode, which can be customized in terms of loudness, and also you can select from three different wind noise filtering settings. It works well to a certain level, I mean the wind noise filtering, and it can even beat the Jabra in ambient mode, but with ANC on, wind noise sounds less distracting on the Elite 7 Active. But the Jabra takes a huge leap in ANC performance and gives you a much better isolation than the Jaybird or the JBL. You get 5 different settings for both the ANC and the hear through mode, so you can fine tune the strength of each feature to your liking. Wind noise is handled well in most modes except for the strongest hear through mode, where the Vista 2 can outperform the Elite 7 Active. And wind noise is the only area where the Elite 7 Active can take points away from the beats, as the lower profile job robots are less sensitive to wind in general. And there is the transparency mode, which is more intense on the Jabra at its highest setting. But it's up to you whether you prefer this intense but customizable sound over the sort of muted but still natural sound of the beats, which does not give you any room for tweaking. I would pick the Jabra for transparency, but the Beats Fit Pro wins the ANC performance with a plumb. Low frequencies especially, but also the high frequencies are blocked out more efficiently than on any of the other buds in this test. There are no settings in the app other than a simple switch for the three different modes, but the ANC works very, very well. I only wish we didn't have to choose between the volume and ambient mode controls on the buttons, but that's another story. And after all this, let's discuss sound quality next. To keep things simple, I ran all my tests with both ANC and EQ turned off. And starting with answering the ever so popular question of which one is the loudest, I would say that it felt like the Jabra had a slight edge over the beats here, with the Jaybird and the Bose just a step behind, while the JBL was clearly the last in terms of sheer volume. But there were very minor differences only and again, these results might reflect how much of a good seal I could get with each bud more than anything else. As for their bass response, the Elite 7 Active can deliver the biggest punch and the most amount of low frequency rumble, but I personally prefer the slightly less intense but more accurate and snappy bass of the bows and the beats. The Jaybird and the JBL are capable of delivering a touch less energy in the lower registers, but that's still more than enough in most cases. But both the Jaybird and the JBL can step up on the ladder when it comes to mid-range clarity. And the Reflect Flow Pro actually makes its way straight to the top along with the beats as their vocals sound more forward than on the other buds. The Bose Sport earbuds and the Jaybird have a bit warmer mid-range and vocals though, which I quite like personally. But the Elite 7 Active performs badly in that regard with a recessed and compressed mid-range. That's where you pay the price for the too much bass I'm afraid. But the Jabra bots can come back to the top again with their energetic and sparkling treble. That is if you like such a sound, as I found it a bit too much of a good thing sometimes especially at higher volumes. If you want loads of high frequency details, but with less sibilance, then your best bet is either the JBL or the Jaybird. If you want even more smoothness in the upper registers, then choose the bows or the beats. I found the sound stage the widest and instrument separation the best on the bows, closely followed by the beats and the Jaybird, then comes the Jabra and the JBL. So without any EQing, the bows can deliver an extensive and well-balanced sound with a punchy bass, sweet mids and smooth highs, which make them my personal favorite. The Beats Fit Pro can give you almost the same qualities with maybe a touch more forward mid-range and a less spacious sound altogether. The Jaybird Vista 2 sounds a bit flat by default, but everything is well balanced, which gives you a good base for any EQing, and you can find one of the best 
EQ settings in the Jaybird app too, so that's a lucky combination there. The JBL buds might be lacking in the bass department, but they can perform better in the mid-range and also in the treble regions, and again, the low frequency response could be the victim of the less than ideal fit in my case. And even though it's not something I would pick as a winning sound, you can get the most amount of energy from the Jabra Elite 7 Active as far as bass and treble go. It's a typical V-shaped sound signature, which might fit your workouts and musical taste the best, but I leave it to you to decide which buds you prefer the most. Please let me know in the comments if you have any preference or if you have a different experience with any of these buds, as I'm always interested in hearing your opinion as well. And keep in mind that with EQing, all of these buds can be fine-tuned or even completely changed in terms of how they sound. And even though I found these five earbuds to be the best of the best for most physical activities, let me quickly mention a few alternatives, just in case you might need something different. For starters, here is the Nyanka Runner Pro. These are bone conducting headphones, which means that they create sound by resonating the cheekbone in front of your ears, which then carries the sound into your inner ear, bypassing your eardrums. So if for whatever reason you don't want or can't plug in your ears, then these open ear headphones are a must have for you. Road safety is also the best with these in my opinion, so if you are a cyclist, then again you better have a look at them. And do you remember when I told you that neither of the buds we talk about today can be used in the water? Now, the Runner Pro is the only exception as they are not only IP68 rated fully waterproof, but they also have 8 GB of built-in storage along with an MP3 player on board, so you can take your favorite songs with you into the sea or the swimming pool, making those long swim sessions a touch more interesting. Their sound is not the best even by bone conduction standards, so you won't get a full bodied bass and too much high frequency detail either, but it's perfect for podcasts and YouTube videos. If you want better sound while still keeping your ears free, then I suggest you give the Aftershocks Aeropex a go. These are currently the best sounding bone conduction headphones available. They lack the onboard storage and the MP3 player function, but for runners and cyclists I can hardly imagine a better and safer solution. And if you need traditional earbuds, but you don't want to spend too much money on the best ones we just discussed, then I have a few more affordable options for you. First, there is the JBL Reflect Mini NC, which is basically the same as the Reflect Flow Pro, only with a few features missing. So if you don't need wireless charging and you are happy with a shorter but still decent enough battery life and you don't mind the downgrade from IP68 to IPX7, then you can get your hands on the Mini NC for less than $100 these days. My other favorite is the MIFO 05 Mark II, which are small, low-profile earbuds, but they are also IPX7 rated waterproof and they can give you a secure fit, aptex support, 100 plus hours of total battery life, and all this comes in a unique but massive metal case, which can also function as a power bank too. What you don't get is wireless charging, app support and active noise cancellation, but the extremely good passive isolation can somewhat make up for the lack of ANC. The bots cost around $110. There are also the Lipertec Pure Play Z3 buds with an IPX7 rating, 70 hours of total battery life, wireless charging, app support and ANC. And you can get all these for less than $100, but what actually made me put these buds on this list was the extremely tight fit I could get in my ears with them. And last, if you like the ear hook design, then have a look at the JLab Epic Air Sport ANC buds. They usually cost around $100, but they tend to get serious discounts, so you can get them for even less. And you get almost all the features you can imagine. Wireless charging, 70 hours of battery life, secure fit, IP66 rating, app support, built-in EQ, and even if the ANC is not quite as effective as on some more expensive buds, you still get tremendous value for your money. But I have to stop here now because it's time to wrap up this video. I know I made this bad joke earlier on about my absolute favorite buds, but honestly there is no such thing. I could pick any of them and be happy with it for different reasons. For the best fit, controls, bass and customization, I would get the Jabra Elite 7 Active. For the best comfort and general sound quality, I would buy the Bose Sport earbuds. 
I would not hesitate and buy the Beats Fit Pro if I was an avid iPhone user, but their ANC is the best regardless of what phone you have anyway. For toughness, good sound and comfort, I would pick the Jaybird Vista 2, which also comes with a great app. And I would also be very happy with the JBL Reflect Flow Pro if ruggedness and battery life were my priorities. But your priorities and preferences probably are completely different than mine anyway, so I'm not going to tell you which buds to buy. All I can say is that if you need a pair of true wireless earbuds to be used in the gym or for any physical activity, you have to make sure you get something that fits your ears as good as possible, as I believe it is one of the key features of any sport-specific earbuds. Almost all earbuds out there, even the cheaper ones, come with some sort of an IP rating these days. Most earbuds have some kind of noise cancelling and they mostly sound decent enough as well. But the fit is crucial if you don't want your earbuds to budge during running or lifting, because I can hardly imagine anything more distracting than having to readjust the buds in my ears every two minutes. So from that perspective, the Jabra Elite 7 Active would be my first choice. Now, maybe I actually picked a winner for you after all. But even if I just told you which one works best for me, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same for you. Of course, I hope I could help you with all the information I just shared, but I also encourage you to watch others' videos as well, because some reviewers might have a slightly different experience with the buds or a completely different approach to these tests in the first place, and their findings might help you make a better decision as well. And if you still have any questions left, then leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to answer you. I cannot promise you to give you a definite answer to all of your questions, but again, I will do my best to give you something useful. I have a best ANC earbuds of the year video in store for you as well, so stay tuned for that, but that's it for my earbuds comparison. If you like this shootout, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel, and giving the video a thumbs up would also earn my gratitude. Thanks for watching. See you next time.